I've had a few requests to cover how damage is actually calculated in Warframe. It's quite an involved topic really, with exceptions all over the shop. So let's peer behind the arsenal and see what math lies within. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. For the purpose of this video, I will only cover weapon damage calculation. Enemy damage reduction adds a whole extra set of variables to consider, not least of which every second enemy has yet another exception somewhere, so I'm going to leave that out for the time being. If you want to know more about enemy modifiers to your damage, such as adaptive scaling, let me know in the comments down below. What I will be covering then is additive versus multiplicative versus absolute buffs, the core damage equation, status proc damage, fall off and follow through, and melee stances. Also, you should absolutely be following me at twitch.tv slash thekengineer, where we discuss topics like this live while absolutely decimating the origin system in search of corrupted holocaust. Anyway, let's dive straight in. Every weapon has its base damage, usually that's impact, puncture and slash added together. Any innate elemental damage also features here, and bonus elements from Kuva and Tenet weapons additionally count as base damage. A weapon will have various other statistics built into it, including fire rate, status chance, critical chance, magazine capacity, reload time, and sometimes multi-shot. Technically, multi-shot is always there, it's just normally a value of 1, and therefore hidden. We can add various bonuses to these values, and the way these bonuses come together to give you your total output varies mathematically. There are three ways these bonuses all combine. Additive, multiplicative, and absolute. When modding for most stats, it's best to think of them as starting with 100%, regardless of the specific values. So an unmodded weapon has 100% of its fire rate, 100% of its damage, 100% of its status chance, and so on. The reason for this is that all mods and most bonuses are additive to the respective base value. Take for example, Serration. At max rank it is 165% damage. This adds to the existing 100% damage stat, to give you a total of 265%. This is what we call an additive bonus. The first such additive bonus on any stat does what it says on the tin. In this case, our damage actually goes up by 165%. If we then add another damage mod, say Heavy Caliber, this will also give us plus 165% damage, meaning we now have 100 plus 165% plus 165%, for a total of 430%. The mod has again done exactly as it promised. However, we haven't increased the damage more than two and a half times over like we did from nothing to having serration. That 430% total is only 62% higher than the 265% total. The damage hasn't even come close to doubling. This is why additive bonuses are considered the weakest type. Each additional bonus affecting the same stat has a much lower true effect than the written value. If instead of using Heavy Calibre for plus 165% damage, we used Prime Cryo Rounds for 165% cold, we're now modding an entirely different stat. We can refer to Serration's damage bonus as pure damage, and Prime Cryo Rounds as elemental damage to distinguish between the two. So we have 100% plus 165% for 265% pure damage, and 100% plus 165% for 265% elemental damage. As these are different stats, they multiply together for a total of 702% final damage. That is quite a bit more than 430%. Different stats multiplying together is why using different types of mods is loosely considered multiplicative. Improving every damage stat once is usually far superior versus the same amount of modding spent just improving one stat. Some external bonuses in the game are multiplicative, giving you a bonus outside of any part of the modding process. For example, Corpus Shields take 75% more damage from Magnetic. This 75% bonus is after all calculations are complete in terms of you firing your weapon or using a Warframe ability, and therefore it multiplies with the whole result for Magnetic damage. That is, the magnetic portion gets multiplied by 175%. Another example of multiplicative bonus can be found in Wukong's Celestial Twin ability. By recasting it on an enemy, the twin deals double the normal damage to that target, 
regardless of other stats. Then we come on to absolute bonuses. There are relatively few of these around. An absolute bonus is one which adds the literal value written on the bonus to your total, rather than adding it to the percentage bonus or multiplying it by the percentage bonus. An example of this is Arcane Avenger. It offers you plus 45% critical chance when you take damage. As an absolute buff, it allows all other calculations to go through, and then just increases the actual critical chance by 45 percentage points. Take for example the Kuvanuka. It starts with a 7% critical chance. Using the additive mod Primed Pistol Gambit, you can increase the stat from 100% of its value to 287% of its value, which will raise the critical chance from 7% to 20.1%. With Arcane Avenger activated as well, the critical chance rises up from 20.1% to 65.1%, due to the 45 percentage point increase. In the main, absolute buffs are stronger the lower the base and modded values are. That covers the difference between additive, multiplicative and absolute bonuses. So let's look at the actual damage equation then. For ordinary gun attacks, not including absolute bonuses, this equation determines the average damage per shot. As I mentioned at the start, base damage is the innate damage stats to your weapon before any bonuses are applied. Pure damage modifiers come next. This includes a lot of different sources. Pure damage mods like Serration, Corrupted damage mods like Heavy Caliber, and Nightmare mods like Blaze, Arcanes like Arcane Primary Charger, Status Overload mods like Condition Overload, some abilities like Vex Armor or Shooting Gallery, even things like the new Helminth Invigorations. All of these modifiers are added together because they're all additive bonuses, along with a base value of 1 representing the 100% unmodified damage. This process is done similarly with crits, but the crits term looks a little bit more complicated as there are two moving parts, crit chance and crit damage. Simply multiplying the base critical chance by 1 plus the critical chance modifiers gives us our actual critical chance. However, for critical damage, it's different. The critical multiplier in your arsenal is designed for ease of reading for ordinary yellow crits. If the multiplier says 3 times, then when you land a yellow crit, you deal 3 times damage. However, without the crit, you'd still be dealing 1 times damage, so the actual increase is only 2 times. If you use mods to increase critical damage, it increases this multiplier, including the base 1 times damage rolled into it essentially making critical hits a fair bit stronger than the mod value initially implies. A 100% critical damage bonus, taking you from 3 times to 6 times multiplier, increases the bonus on a yellow crit from 2 times to 5 times extra damage, so that bonus is actually 150%. If this feels like a no-brainer to you, that's fine. I just know that some people I've spoken to have been surprised by this, so I'm spelling it out for everyone. Taking this into account, you can see why the multiplier is calculated first, and then 1 is removed from that, as that is the 1 times normal damage we always have. That 1 times we take out is sat here at the front of the whole critical term. Conveniently then, this means we don't need to make any fancy changes to accommodate orange or red crits. Each additional crit tier gives us the same damage bonus again, that is 1 times less than the multiplier shown in the arsenal. So on a 3 times crit weapon, the normal damage is 1 times, the yellow crit is 3 times, the orange crit is 5 times, the red crit is 7 times, and so on. By directly multiplying our modified critical chance with our modified critical multiplier without the 1 times, we get our average critical damage multiplier. This accounts for how some shots will land a lower crit, and some shots will land a higher crit, all in one simple set of terms. Remember, this equation isn't including any absolute values, mostly so I don't overwhelm you with them. So, things like Arcane Avenger would need to be added in here too if you want to take that into account. If you instead want to use the damage equation for a specific hit of a specific critical tier, you should change out the critical chance value for a flat number for how big a crit you're calculating. The very next term is the faction modifier, which is simply the multiplier for bonus damage against the faction you are shooting. Effectively, we've got five factions. Corpus, Grenier, Infested, Corrupted, and everyone else. Everyone else is its own faction modifier because we don't have normal faction mods for everyone else. There is the sentient damage bonus of the sacrificial set, but that's about it. As you normally only face one faction at a time, 
it's usually safe to just include faction modifiers in your calculation. Just remember to account for surprise extras like the Stalker turning up. Now let's pause here. You've got your base damage, pure damage, critical hit, and faction damage modifiers all calculated. Up to this point here is what's called modded damage. I don't know who called it that or why, but it's what you'll find it named on the wiki, and so I'm sticking with that term to make it easier if you refer to the wiki later. Modded damage is a thing used in other calculations such as proc damage, so it's good to remember this grouping of stats. Next up, we have our elemental and physical modifiers. Elemental modifiers affect the total base damage, so they're a nice and easy 1 plus elemental bonus, like with pure damage or faction damage. Elemental modifiers include the 90% mods, 60-60 mods, as well as modifiers such as from Shock Trooper Augment. This doesn't include the bonus damage from Sister or Lich weapons, as those bonuses are actually part of your base damage. Physical mods are different. They only buff up the portion of the base damage which matches the physical mod you are using. A slash mod only gives a bonus to the portion of slash damage on your weapon, for example. If that slash damage is zero, such as on the Fulmin, then a slash mod will do absolutely nothing. That's why they have their own terms in the equation and are multiplied by the physical proportion for each mod. In the vast majority of weapon cases, there is precious little reason to use the physical damage mods as a result. So only use these if you know exactly what you are doing. And then finally, marking the difference between damage per bullet and damage per shot, we have the multi-shot term. Again, just like the pure damage and faction damage portions, we're adding up the multi-shot modifiers plus one. However, this time, we're also multiplying them by the base multi-shot. This accounts for weapons, normally shotguns, which start off with more than one shot per shot. The base multi-shot is multiplied directly, rather than added to, so you still get the same percentage gain from multi-shot mods as with ordinary weaponry. As you can see, each separate term in the equation is multiplied by all the others, stacking pure damage, critical damage, faction damage, elemental damage modifiers, and multi-shot all on top of each other. Doubling the value of each of these terms, a 100% increase each, would give you a final multiplier of 32 times to your base damage. Yet if you just instead say increased elemental damage by 100% 5 times over, your final multiplier to base damage would just be 6 times. Once again, multiplicative stats beats additive bonuses hands down. Following on from a weapon's direct damage, we have proc damage. There are 5 types of status effect which deal damage. Slash, electric, toxin, heat and gas. The nuances behind each I've covered more extensively in my damage type guide, so you can check that out there if you've not seen it yet or need a refresher. In terms of damage, they all work similarly but with some quirks. Slash proc is 0.35 times the modded damage times 1 plus faction mods per second. Toxin is 0.5 times modded damage times 1 plus your faction mods times 1 plus your toxin mods per second. Electric is 0.5 times modded damage times 1 plus your faction mods times 1 plus your electric mods per second. Gas is 0.5 times the modded damage times 1 plus faction mods per second. And then heat is supposed to be 0.5 times modded damage times 1 plus faction mods times 1 plus heat mods per second. I say supposed to be, as in the current version of the game, the first heat proc applied does indeed follow this rule. However, until all heat effects are cleared from that target, every subsequent heat proc uses the original source's faction modifier and heat modifier. This means if the first heat proc comes from an Ember's Fire Blast, which cannot be modded with faction mods or heat mods, then all following heat procs will also have no faction nor heat bonus until all of the heat procs run out on those targets. This goes the other way too, allowing a weapon to be stacked with heat and faction mods, apply a proc to a target, and then swapping over to a damage focused weapon that also procs the heat, now using the bonuses of the first weapon. So yeah, heat is bugged, and I'm absolutely certain this is a bug because it allows both exploitation and accidental griefing. I don't normally comment on exploitable bugs in Warframe, but this one can really mess with anyone trying to get their head around proc math, so there you go. For everything else though, it's pretty easy to read off. All damage ticks apply once per second, 
all usual modded damage, that is the base damage, pure damage, critical damage and faction damage combined that I called out earlier, but not including elemental or physical mods. Faction damage buffs are then reapplied, and the basic elements use their elemental mods to buff up the proc damage further, but slash and gas do not. And now we've got our basic damage calculated. This is usually the point someone stops when comparing weapons on a purely theoretical level, and it's a reasonable place to do so as long as everyone remembers the limits to the theory. Reducing your damage in practice are three major modifiers depending on the weapon. Projectile fall off, explosion fall off and melee follow through. Projectile fall off is typically used on shotguns and snipers. They outline a short range below which you deal full damage and a long range beyond which you do so-called minimal damage. The minimal amount varies from weapon to weapon and is only known experimentally. The wiki tends to be accurate for your reference on a weapon by weapon basis, so if you want to know about your specific weapon that would be the place to check. Whatever damage fall off modifier you have is directly multiplied onto your base damage affecting both direct hit and proc damage amount. Explosion fall off works similarly except it doesn't have a lower range. Explosion fall off immediately starts reducing damage with distance. The range in the arsenal shows how far out the explosion reaches and the fall off shows how much damage is lost at the very edge of the range. For example the Tenet Envoy has a fall off of 80%. Losing 80% of the damage at the extreme range with only 20% of the damage still being delivered. At half the range from the center of the explosion, it's half the fall off, so only 40% is lost. Melee follow through is quite a bit different. Melee swings can hit multiple enemies. Rather than delivering full damage to each enemy, follow through is the fraction of damage that hits each subsequent enemy in the swing. For example, with a follow through of 0.6, the first enemy takes full damage, the next one hit takes 0.6 times the damage, the third one takes 0.6 squared or 0.36 times the damage, and so on multiplying by 0.6 for each additional enemy. This only applies to swings and other attacks which, as the name suggests, follows through the enemies. Explosions like with glaives instead use the explosion fall off based on range, not the number of targets hit. Finally, regarding melee, they also have these elusive stances. These provide different ways of actually wielding the weapon in combat, complete with imaginatively named combos that otherwise do very little to explain what's going on. It's been known for the longest time that these stances have different damage modifiers and different animation lengths which, overall, affects how much damage you actually deal. While the values aren't given in game, some studios Tenno have figured them all out and made the information available on the wiki. I'll grab one of these more complex ones to show you how to read it. This is the moves table for the stance Final Harbinger. Breaking it down, each distinct move within a moveset is marked by a single circle, such as this first one of Null Warning. Making a melee attack with this stance while not moving deals a strike with a 200% damage modifier and then another 200% damage strike which also has a guaranteed impact and slash proc. You cannot do just a single attack with this move on this stance, it deals two attacks each time. The next melee action in the moveset would then do two more attacks, one for 200% damage and one for 300% damage. The third move deals 300% damage and lifts the enemy up, deals two strikes of 100% damage and then a fourth strike of 100% damage with a forced slash proc. The final move deals three lots of 400% damage which all knock the target down. These percentages are all multiplicative with the damage of the weapon, typically with no additional modifiers. A few stances have some exceptions in their notes on the wiki page because, well, nothing in life is simple. This covers probably 90% of any damage calculation you'd need to consider when theory crafting and comparing weapon builds. You will find niche factors here or there like sniper combos and focus calls, but this will let you assess and compare the majority of weapons. Also, try not to think about damage quantization because honestly that thing is just bonkers. I do hope you have learned something from this video. If you have, make sure to leave a like and join the ever-growing subscriber count on this channel as well. That's all from me for now, so as always, add mods, get results and fight well Tenno.